Welcome to Arlation Studios, and today we're talking about Logic Pro 10 and working with movies. Hey, I'm Paul, and working with movies is something I do every single day, many times a day. Whether it's scoring commercials or films or documentaries or all kinds of different projects, working with movies in Logic is one of the easiest things you can do. Logic makes it so simple, and so I want to show you a simple kind of tutorial, kind of just the workflow that I use to work with movies. Now, there's lots of different ways to do this, and there's some deeper dives all over the internet. This is going to be just a simple overview of bringing a movie in, doing a little bit of scoring, maybe lining some things up, and then exporting out a, a project for review by maybe a director. So let's get started. I have a project here. I'm going to call up a simple project uh, with an audio track just to get started. And I want to show you that my project is in 44.1. Now, movies are normally going to be at 48. When we work with film, when we work with production houses, they're always at 48. And I know some audio-only studios at 44.1. We've just chosen across the board. Everything in our house is 48. However, I want to put this session at 44.1 so you see what happens when you bring a movie in. Now, I'm going to go to File, Movie, Open, and you can drag one in as well. I'm just doing it this way for this tutorial. Now, this is my preview movie. This is a stock movie we bought. It's a little scary kind of movie. I want to bring it in. And first of all, Logic's going to ask two questions. Do you want to open the movie? Yep, that's why we're here. And do you want to extract the audio? Do I want to play the embedded audio from the movie, or do I actually want to bring the audio in as a track so I can do some stuff with it? And I do want to bring it in. So Logic then starts yelling. Your session's at 44.1, your movie's at 48. Do you want us to change your session or do you want to keep it at 44.1? I don't want to change it. I mean, I want to change it. I don't want to keep it. I want to go to 48. When I see a blue box in Logic, I pretty much smash it. Then it's going to ask about frame rate. Now, the default frame rate is at 25. I could have used a template and changed it, but I get all kinds of frame rates all day long. So this frame rate is at 60 or 59.94. So we're going to keep it at that frame rate. So blue button, hit it. So... Here we go. The movie comes in, and we've got two things going on. We have a movie in the middle that we can take this, and we can put it on a second screen. We can make it smaller. We can make it bigger. We can make it full screen. Also, you can close it, and it'll pop over to the left there. It'll stay tucked in right there until you're ready to do something else with it again. So I'm going to open it back up. Now, I want to show you one thing about the audio in this movie. If you right-click and go to Movie Project Settings, you'll see that you get a movie volume slider and a mute button. Now I'm going to unmute it, and I'm going to mute this audio that got brought in. We haven't talked about it yet, but I'm going to mute that. And you can see that we, as we start to play the movie, now we can hear it. We can turn the audio up and down. This is the audio that's embedded into the movie, right? And you can't do much with it other than turn it up and turn it down and mute it. Now, for what we're going to do right now, I'm not going to use this audio. So let's just leave it right there. What came in when we imported it and it asked us, do you want to bring the audio, is an audio track. Now, you'll see that it also has a little lock on it, right? That means that this audio is locked to this movie. If I move the movie track around up here in the, in the movie area, the audio stays locked in sync with it. Now, so if you have dialogue and sound effects and things like that, you want it to stay in sync. You can unlock it by going down to Simpty Lock and Unlock. And now I can move the audio, and the, movie will uh, and the movie will stay in place. Now I'm also out of sync, though. I'm like, oh, gosh, I hate when that happens because I need things to stay in sync in this movie. There might be reasons for you to move it around, but for me, I need this to stay in sync. So I'm going to undo what I did, right? And we're just going to leave it like that. Now, as you can see here, I've moved the movie away from bar one. So I'm going to start to put it back. I want it to start at bar one. Now, as I move over, you have to be careful because Logic's got this funny little thing. As you start going to the left, it'll just keep going. You see the movie shrinking. The time is getting crazy. It's like, what is happening? Well, if you go to the movie project settings, you see now that you've gone past the, the, the bar one, you've now kind of started You're sort of in the, and later in the movie. You're not at the beginning of the movie anymore. And that's kind of a kooky thing. Instead of shoving it over to the left like that, one thing you can do is say, okay, I want my movie to start at the top of the movie on bar one. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to go one hour, zero, zero minutes, zero, zero seconds, zero, zero frames. Time code likes to start at one hour. There's long explanations. Let's don't get into that right now. But now I've started my movie at bar one at one hour, and now I'm at the beginning of it. All right, now, not a fan of this music, don't like it, so boom, it's gone. Now I've got a nice blank movie. But if I want to bring that back, if I want to hear it for some reason, I can bring the embedded audio back in. All right, but we're going to get rid of that for now. Now, so my movie's in place, and 
I want to bring in, let's see, a multi timbral instrument. So let's do a software instrument, multi timbral of six parts. And I'm going to immediately make a track stack. And I think I want to use Omnisphere for this. So I call it Omni, and then I go to the first instrument here, and I'm going to call up Omnisphere. And this is a multi timbral instrument. So right now I have six tracks, and so I can do six uh, different MIDI channels in the same instance of Omnisphere. That's good. So let's, for the first track, um, let's go to this Triple Spiral Audio Fission, Fission B. Um, man, this thing's a, I really like these sounds. And Completion. I know I like this sound. And so um, I've got the sound called up. I'm going to shrink this. I'm going to actually just get rid of the window. I don't want to see it. And just like with any project, you can have four counts and you can start to go. Not bad, not bad. And like with any project, you can just have four clicks and start to go. Here we go. All right, so this is my first sync point right there. So you saw when the scene changed, I played a note, right? But I played it a little late. The, the scene changed there. And as you can see right in here, uh, I played a little later. So let's open that up and move that to right where I want it. So I grab, uh, I'm here in the piano roll, I grab it and watch the movie move. And it's mark, it's moving where the beginning of this note is, right there. Now let's see if this feels a little better. That's good, now let's play it from the top. Good, like that. Now, um, let's have a second sound. So I'm going to go to instrument one, channel two in Omnisphere, call it up, go to the second multi timbral instrument, multi uh, MIDI channel if you like. Uh, hybrid instruments, I don't know. Hmm, clearing zones. I don't even know what this is. Let's see. Oh, that'd be, I might be good. Let's put a little, let's put a little uh, on the foot, on that first footstep. Let's see if we can make that happen. Okay, here we go. That's kind of fun. I like that. Now, I want to work with this a little bit. But instead of working with the MIDI, because, you know, sometimes if you don't get it right on and, and you start here, it won't, you know, it won't fire. I'm going to go ahead and bounce this in place. So right-click, bounce in place. And it takes that instrument and mutes it, makes an audio file of it. I'm going to move it out of this track stack for a second. And I'm going to see if I can get this lined up a little better. Now, let's find out where that foot hits. Right there, yep, and so maybe, I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna close that up and I'm gonna open this back end a little bit and let's see what we got. Not bad, I'm gonna put a little fade on it. I like it, let's hear from the top. All right, so now I think with some of the footsteps, I'd like to put a couple piano notes. So I'm going to call up a new instrument. And um, let's go to Piano Tech. And on this instrument, let's go for the cinematic instrument, but I also want to throw some good verb on there. So I'm going to go to bus two here, and I'm going to throw up maybe ROM from Native Instruments. And let's use one of those big, fat, uh, huge, like, um, uh, ethereal acoustic. Let's see. Let's try something else here. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. It's got some nice, uh, coursey stuff on there. Now, let's see if we can get uh, these, some of these footsteps lined up here. Let's see how cool that would be. All right, back up. That's pretty good. Let's check them out. 
All right, so let's look at the different notes here. Where are you? There we go. Let's look and see. That's a little, that can go a little sooner, I think. Let's move it over. Let's see. Right there. Let's try that. Let's look at that. Yep. That can go sooner. All right, boom. Let's try that. Now that looks better. Oh, a little late. Let's see what happened there. Whoops. Get in there. Right there. Let's try that. There you go. So everything's nice and lined up, right? So now that we've got everything lined up. I want to export it and I want to show a director, right? So I'm going to select this cycle and you can do this two ways. You can just drag that cycle bar over or you can go to the custom um, transport and type in. Maybe I want to just do straight up, you know, 10, you know, bar 10. Uh, I won't go, there you go, 10, 1, you know, if you want to do it like that. Or just open this guy up right there. Now, I'm going to export this audio to a movie so that can be viewed by somebody else. So I'm going to movie, this is how hard it is, export audio to movie, boom. Now, decisions that you have to make here. First of all, you've got to name it. And then the audio you put in it, down here is you can have AAC for a smaller file, or you can put in you know PCM audio at 48 for a bigger file. You can do 24 bit if you want. I'm gonna just do a large audio file, so I get some a, a good quality on the audio. Now, here's what it's asking me. Remember that embedded audio we talked about. Now, do I want to put that embedded audio back into this? Let's say maybe it was just dialogue in this movie and there was no music. Now I haven't been listening to it, but maybe I'd like it to put it back in. If you click enabled on separate tracks, then it will put that dialogue in this movie. I don't want any of the old audio so I'm, I'm going to deselect everything all right now it's going to bounce it and then it's going to put it in the movie so when we come out of logic and go here's my review movie and now you'll hear the new music And you have a movie that's only the length of what we spit out. Maybe you have a 20-minute movie. I just need to show this 18 seconds right here. So that's how that long that's how long that movie is. You can pop that in Dropbox or anything else you want to and send it on and get a nice review. So that is um, working with movies and logic, man. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have some questions, throw them in the comments. We'll try to answer them. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. We're gonna do more of these. You guys stay safe. Thanks for watching. Peace.